That's what I look at social media like. It's like, I'm just chasing the same people to the trying to act like, oh, you're still on Instagram? It's like, you were on Instagram. You had a man bun. You listened to emo. You rollerbladed. You can just keep going back, right? You had a hula hoop. Hey, what's up, GQ? It's Bill Burr. And I'm going undercover on the internet. Huh? Oh, it's actually me. Don't you like that? It's actually me. That sounds like the end of one of the shows your wife watches. All right, here we go. Can somebody help me identify what type of Adidas sneakers Bill Burr is wearing? Good question. Those are like the Bob Lanier's, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's from like way back in the day. Somewhere around the first Shaq shoe that looked like, a, like an eye exam or some sort of weather forecast. I was just like, I, I don't get what sneakers are anymore. You know what I mean? And then a few years later, there was the first Kobe that was all squared off, looking like uh, like the feet of robots, you know? I think that was supposed to be like Robocop. So I've always liked the old ones, the Dr. J's, the Kareem's, you know? Jesus Christ, look at this. What do you think would get Bill mad enough so that he cut off his ear like Van Gogh? First of all, that painting is amazing. And I'm not just saying that because that's me. Maybe it is, because I actually look, uh, I look pretty wild in that. Like whoever did this, you were amazingly talented. I might have to steal that look. What would you make me mad enough to cut my ear off? Nothing. <laughs> I mean, I'm an asshole, but I'm not that crazy. What is the prevent defense? Non-American. After Googling it, I still don't get it. Hey, after watching it for almost 40 years, I don't fucking get it. Can someone explain it to me as if I'm five? The prevent defense. All right, on paper. You're winning the game. There's a little amount of time left. So rather than getting up on the line and covering their receivers, the receiver's the person you throw the ball to, what they do is they give them a big cushion and allegedly protect the sidelines. If you go out of bounds, the clock stops. So you basically just give them a 20 yard cushion. I can't do metrics. I don't know what that is. What's supposed to happen is you tackle them and before they go down the field and score, the clock runs out. That never happens. What happens is they just get 20 yard completions and go out of bounds. And then every shit quarterback in the league all of a sudden looks like Joe Montana. All right, Star Wars, fucking Star Wars, dude. Nobody says wicked awesome. They don't. Can you buy these? I don't think that you can. I have no idea. But if you can, I know I don't make any money. Now on to Quora. Quora sounds like some sort of chant you do at a yoga class that you shouldn't have gone to. Is Bill Burr a psychopath? Well, I mean, if I was, I can't answer that. You'd have to analyze me. What would you estimate Bill Burr's IQ? I would take the under on that one. Why is Bill Burr referred to as a comedian's comedian? You know why? Because I do my fucking time. I don't burn the light, that's why. If I'm supposed to do 15 minutes, I do 15 minutes. If I pop in, I'm not gonna go in and burn the light and lean on the mic stand and be like, yes, what else is going on? And just standing up there being a fucking asshole. I mean, I'm a nice guy, try to be. You know, people would debate that, but you know. What is the life of a Boston sports fan like? Um, it's awesome. It's always been awesome. Winning or losing, it's always been awesome because it is bigger than religion in Massachusetts. People watch every game. Like when I lived there, you know, and I had somebody to t talk to, like I, like when the Bruins had a season, you just watched every game. And then the Celtics were always great. The Patriots were fun. Patriots were hilarious. It was just like, we, we, we weren't really even in the league. You know, we had this little guy on the side of our helmet. We played in what looked like a high school football stadium. None of it made sense. We always come close and then we would mess it up. And then a guy named Bob Kraft bought the team and made three of the great, greatest coaching hires in a row. Bill Parcells, Pete Carroll, and then Bill Belichick, which is insane. So I have full faith on whoever the hell he hired next. <laughs> Look at me, all of a sudden it's a sports show. This is what it's like. When is Bill Burr's next special coming out? Aren't there enough? There are enough fucking stand-up specials? Jesus Christ, they put out one a week. That's classic me. This person's like a fan. They won't want to know when my next word, and I take it as like a, you know, let's go, let's go. Like, that's how I heard it. I'm learning. When's my next special coming out? I don't know, but I am shooting it this year, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I am having some of the best shows of my career. Instagram, it's me. I don't have enough money for a stunt double. Okay, how come John Lovitz looks exactly the same as he did in 1993? Oh, that's because his dad is a basset hound. 
He comes from a long line of sad people. And he's funny from a distance, but if you get too close to him, that sadness comes on you. He's a horrible human being. No, he's actually one of my favorite people in this business. That's not a good picture of him. But they're not saying he looks bad. I did all of that, didn't I? Sorry, John. They're saying you haven't aged? <laughs> oh, all right, Dr. Phil live. Adam Ray, unbelievably talented comedian. All right, is this really Dr. Phil? I think he captures his essence. Dr. Phil, you know, has to play a, like a little like more humble on his actual show. What I liked about the way Adam Ray does it, you get more of Dr. Phil around the house, where maybe, you know, every couple of hours he reminds his wife how much money he's making and how well she's being taken care of. So whatever it is that he's doing that she doesn't like, she might want to think about bringing it up the next time. What is this? How much football do you watch a week? Oh yeah, yeah, that's back before I had kids. I still had a little bit of hair. I used to watch, you know, a one o'clock game, a four o'clock game, and then a late game. And then I would be, with the package, I would be taping other games. And then you already had a Monday night, you had a Thursday night game. So I'd have a Tuesday and a Wednesday game and a Friday game to watch during the week that I had recorded. And then on Saturday, I would watch college football. Now I have kids and I, I don't know, I'm always watching Bluey, which is oddly, you know, really deep. What are we doing here? I'm getting misty eyed watching a cartoon. All right, Twitter. I love that we're still calling it Twitter. All right, and that laminated asshole is gonna have to deal with it. I like the letter X, do ya? Gives a fuck. I know he was added to the show ironically, but man, someone give Bill Burr an Oscar for that performance for chapter 15 of The Mandalorian. Well, first of all, it's television, so you can't win an Oscar. It's an Emmy. We wanted you to say that so bad. Do you know something, what I wanna say so bad? Somebody always says whenever I do something dumb, they go, oh, your buddy, a buddy of mine who died. They go, oh, he'd be rolling over in his grave right now. And I always wanna be like, he was cremated. Who the fuck brings up somebody's dead friend? Thank you for watching Star Wars. <laughs> okay, let me just read this here. Donald Trump walked into an arena that holds 20,000 people and 19,999 people were so happy. And then there was Bill Burr's wife. Yeah, and I love how people are like, oh, how can you do that? It's like, well, he's racist. He likes to sort of plagiarize some Hitler stuff every once in a while. Like, what is surprising that a black woman wouldn't like him? I don't like the guy. My wife giving him the finger is what I love about my wife. Do you know where you stand with her? And you can't say that about a lot of people. So when I say something around the house, if she laughs, I know it's funny. And then also I know if it pisses her off, I tell her I'm gonna put that in my act and she, she goes, don't put that in your act. I go, I'm absolutely, if you say don't put it in the act, it goes in the fucking act. All right, let's go to YouTube and see what you animals said. I would pay money to see Bill at a parent-teacher conference or school function of any kind. Dude, I don't act like how I do on stage. Oh no, I did have one incident. <laughs> but we're friends now. Wikipedia, the poor man's encyclopedia. On August 21st, 2022, Burr became the first comedian to perform at Fenway Park in front of a sold out crowd of around 35,000 people. It was also the largest comedy show in the history of Boston. Well, I mean, I didn't count everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was unbelievable. And then once I got out there, they just have like, it's so figured out with like the sound and the big screens. It was just like this giant comedy club. Everybody was goes, just make sure you take it in. You, you can't take it in when you're doing stand up. It's like, tell a joke, bam. And then they're like waiting for the next one. So I can't, you know. You know what Taylor Swift just takes in her crowd? Yeah, you can't do that in stand up. <laughs> Burr first performed stand-up comedy at the age of 23 on March 2nd, 1992. That is true. There was a Find Boston's Funniest College Student contest at Nick's Comedy Stop, which is still there. All I remember from the first night is that I walked on stage, forgot everything that I was gonna say, but I remember go reaching for the microphone and it felt like an outer body experience. And I kind of knew in that moment I had finally found what I wanted to do. Like 23 doesn't sound old to me now, but 23 flailing when you're 23, you feel kind of hopelessly behind. And I had tried construction, landscaping, warehousing, sales. I tried all of this stuff. I was working in a dental office with my dad at that time. I just, none, none of it was, I actually got my license to sell health insurance. And that's how far down the wrong road I was going. If I can give you guys any advice, you know, cause a lot of people have traumatic childhoods. One of the hardest things to do, learn in life is to listen to the voice inside of you. Cause everybody else has been yelling at you to, you know, not say what you're thinking. So that, and that will really, steer you 
away from what you want in life. You have to really like, listen. Burr is a licensed helicopter pilot and enjoys playing drums. I love playing drums and I love flying helicopters. I absolutely love them and I, I got involved in them because of conspiracy theory. Everybody thinks conspiracy theory is bad. Um, I was, you know, reading about the dollar and how there was nothing behind it. And I was thinking, what if it collapsed? How do you get out of LA? You can't even get out of it when everybody believes that there's gonna be food tomorrow. And it just made sense, up and out, helicopter. TikTok, I, I, I'm i not on TikTok. I drew left Instagram, I was like, that's it. Can we get you reading books in schools? Teach the kids some real life lessons and tell the hard truth about life. Ha ha, they need it. I've done this actually. Did I read books? No, we, it was like, Jimi Hendrix Day or something like that. Black History Month, so they were doing something for Jimi Hendrix, which is really stupid. What, you're only gonna appreciate Jimi Hendrix in fucking February? Is he not good in April? Let's just plow ahead here. There's no way you lose when you go after a dream. No, you don't, because it leads you to a better place and the, the lessons that you learn. Sometimes going after a dream, you find out that that's not even what you wanted. Like, it, that's not gonna be this phantom itch you're never gonna be able to scratch because you tried it and you're like, hey, you know what? This isn't for me. Your dream changes too. I started in 92 and, and being a comedian and being famous, what that was in 1992 before, you know, mainstream internet and cell phones and all that, it went from something that seemed cool to like, ugh. Like may, maybe, you know, not so much. It became like, uh, like truffle oil. Remember that was like a big fucking thing. They just put that in everything. It was just like, it was too much. Prosperity is never guaranteed regardless. So why not fail at what you love rather than fail at something you don't care about? All right, I don't understand why they had to jump on what I said. That's like a big thing, like an Instagram, like somebody's doing something and all of a sudden your fucking head is just sitting there and like, that's like this person's playing an amazing guitar solo. I can't enjoy it unless I see what your reaction is. That's a major red flag for narcissists which is something you need to learn to recognize. Okay, that's it. I'm signing off the internet. Closing the laptop. Thank you guys for taking the time to write in. I had a good time. I hope you did too.